Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Ryan Vlahovich, featuring special guests Alicia Overland and Taylor Mims. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our third installment of Late on Cable 8. Tonight we're getting sporting. We're actually chatting with some of our own Coug athletes. Yeah, I know, right? It's actually pretty cool. The last time I played a team sport was actually sixth grade. I was a basketball player growing up, and uh, that was the way my entire family was. So I actually was super excited to, uh, to you know, try and like try out for like a select team and everything. And I've been working all throughout my elementary school career to try and make it onto the team that everybody else made it onto. And well, I didn't make it. And that's my sport experience. Anyway, time for some news. Brooklyn Nine-Nine star Chelsea Peretti has the world more heated than global warming, something which doesn't exist. Peretti posted a picture of her finished piece of cake on Twitter, but all the frosting was still on the plate. The responses were split between fervent agreement and horrified shock. Man, anything can go viral these days. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> well, boys, we did it. Crack a cold one to this. The video game Fortnite has now been cited in 200 different divorce proceedings. Experts say the divorces relate to one of the two partners having an addiction to the game, leading to an end in the relationship. However, with my last Fortnite-related breakup, it had to do with the bottle of warm lemonade that my ex drank that I left while laying around when I played it. During a recent game against the Chargers, Buffalo Bills player Vontae Davis apparently decided to retire at halftime. The Chargers were beating the Bills 31-20, and Davis apparently stated that something didn't feel right about the way he was playing. Verbatim. It's okay, Vontae. We all know that you just don't want to play for the worst team in the league. His retirement sparked an uproar on social media, but honestly, it looks like he was better off retiring anyway. Happy holidays to the 90s, kids. My brethren, the beloved Dr. Seuss story, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, is getting an Illumination animated reboot with a new theme song from rapper Tyler, the creator. Seems like a cool matchup, considering they both probably enjoy cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Black recently got his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in Los Angeles, California. I think this is so cool because honestly, I'm surprised it took this long. With cinematic classics such as Kung Fu Panda, Nacho Libre, uh, School of Rock, Kung Fu Panda 2, Shark Tale, and Kung Fu Panda 3, Jack Black <laughs> is definitely a precious part of Hollywood history. This man was a staple of my childhood, and I'm really glad to see he's finally getting the recognition he deserves. So with the 2019 Super Bowl set to be played in Atlanta, fans were excited for the rich music culture of the city to be on display at the halftime show. I thought it would have been cool. Instead, the headliners will be, drumroll please, Maroon 5. So predictable. I mean, like, whether or not they're actually representative of American music tastes at all. I mean, they're commercial, mainstream pop. At least one of your parents know them, and, well... They're old enough to be your dad, and at least one of them knows the lead singer is the guy with the really tight jeans from The Voice. Maybe there's hope for like a Kendrick Lamar guest appearance, but still, catch me singing. She will be loved very loudly during halftime. Anyway, that's all the news we've got for you right now, so we'll be right back, everybody. Stay precious, Palouse. News. I'm your anchor Clark Richardson here with co-anchor Barry Tipton and we are here covering the first ever badminton world finals at the Kmart arena so today we are here with the best players ever and I'm excited to keep you updated on this prestigious event but even more excited to update you on our sponsor stink be gone when you're stuck between a hard place and a stink let stink be gone get that stink gone yeah like the four day old bean dip smell Mm -hmm. that, that, that's right. Let's go check in on our computer, computer competitors to see how they're preparing. This gal right here, now this is the two-time international champ, all the way from Romania, Elena Popescu. See her stoic disposition? This gal does not mess around. She is a serious player. 
and a serious stinker, I'm sure. But no more thinks to stink beyond deodorant. If you think you stink, you probably do. I think a lot of things about myself. Oh yeah? What are you thinking about? I don't know, I forgot. I'll tell you when I remember. Okay, let's check back in on our players. Here we have Gabrielle Lemieux from, you guessed it, France. As you can see, she's a very relaxed player. She's consistently calm and focused, but still ready to strike at any moment. As the underdog in this game, many are rooting for her, but let's see how she stacks up as this first match begins. So clean, a powerful serve by Pepiskew. Just as powerful as Stink Begone is at eliminating post at game Stink. You know, it's incredible that they can hit that thing when it's so small. It's like trying to count past 12. Very funny, Baron. Just your humor and unmatched, your un... Just your humor is unmatched, just like Stink Begone deodorant. When you have a stink, just grab a stick. And we'll see today if our players can stick it out in today's match. Stick it out? That's so funny. That wasn't really a pun. You just said the same word twice. <laughs> Quiet, you. Popescu takes the lead while Lemieux seems to be trying to concentrate. As unusual as this method is, meditating between serves is totally legal. Clearly, this strategy gets on the nerves of the short-tempered Popescu. Short and stout, and ready to blow, just like a little teapot, right Clark? That sure is right. Now let's see as the tension mounts how our players are handling everything. Ah, as always, the fights are settled on the court. I think this is shaping up to be a fantastic matchup between two experts. And wanna know what else I think? I think that Stick Me God is the best deodorant on this planet, and we'll be right back. Alright, welcome back everybody to Late on Cable 8. Our first guest tonight is actually a soccer player here at WSU. Uh, with two career assists, eight career goals, five of which were game winners, I might add, and 18 hours of gameplay, she's a 5'6 powerhouse, number 29. Would you welcome Alicia Overland? <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming on the show. Of really course, to have thanks you for here. having me. Of course. You look great. Uh, good to have you here. Uh, and we know you're definitely really busy and everything, and I just want to start by getting to know you a little bit. Okay. Um, what's your year? I'm a senior here. And what's your major? Uh, human resource management. Okay. What made you want to get into that? Um, honestly, I've changed my major probably more than anyone that I know coming in here. And so just thinking about it, I was like, well, I don't know exactly what I want to do. Business is a good kind of realm to give me some options. And so I chose business and human resource. I just really like working with people. And I think I like making differences in companies. So human resources seem like a good route to go with that. Yeah. They're clearly connected too. So yeah. it's a good little bridge there. Right. So being a student athlete has got to be difficult and balancing everything that like the school, the practice and the games and everything. And I know, especially being on the soccer team, they put like, there's a lot of restrictions there. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you balance all of it? Uh, you know, a lot of time management it's definitely takes, uh, it takes a lot of thinking and processing. So, okay, I practice at this time. I have class at this time. When can I get my sleep in? When can I get my eating in? When can I do my homework and just studying and just a lot of balance and time management really it's got to be like taking it day by day oh it is really. definitely it changes every day yeah mm -hmm. i'm sure so i mean you gotta love the sport when you're doing it that way when oh, did you of when did you when did you start playing i started well when i first stepped foot on the field i was probably first second grade but i didn't get into the team recreational aspect until third grade when my sister and I finally convinced our parents to sign us up. Sure. Yeah, it took a while, but we got them. That was always like the like one of the sports that I remember playing when I was a little kid. I remember it was like soccer, baseball, and basketball. Mm -hmm. Those were the three. Um, now I never really did much sports after that. But anyway, that's not really the point here. But what I um, what I want to ask, like, did you think that when you kind of like first started playing soccer? Because I know a lot of athletes that I've talked to, like, it was the dream is to go pro in it. Right. Was that how it was for you? I definitely had a goal growing up that that was my sight. Like I would watch it on TV and say that's going to be me one day, this yeah, and that. Course. But yeah, as I got older, older, those things kind of changed. But I mean, that's always the dream for an athlete. Yeah. Could you see yourself doing it? I could if the opportunity was there. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So what's the pregame ritual for everything? Like when you when there's a game about to happen, let's say you're going against the Huskies or something, how do you prepare? Uh, for me personally, I like to just take a little bit of time before the game and just kind of picture myself in certain situations on the field. Just what am I going to do in this situation? How am I going to go into tackles, headers, all that kind of stuff, and just sit there and kind of vision it. 
so I can put that play on the field. Yeah. And then just something I'm kind of a little OCD about is I wear the same color headband the same way, fold yeah. it in half every game. Yeah. I got you. That's my thing. I ran cross country in high school, and uh, when I was doing that, I remember it being just such a mental oh, thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I'm not saying they're the, same, the soccer or cross country are the same in any yeah. means, but sports, I feel like, at least for cross country, this was the case. It's a mental thing more than it is physical oh, it is. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's the same way for soccer? Yeah, oh, definitely. I think for pe for certain people, it kind of differs, really. But more, Some people are more superstitious than others and have to, you know, put their right sock on before their left kind of thing. Yeah. But for me, it's like that a little bit, but it's mostly just kind of like those two things that I really need to do before a game that gets me. What, how close are you with everybody on the t on your team? We're all really close. Yeah, yeah. one big family in there. Mm -hmm. So do you guys do a lot of like pregame rituals and everything, like before the game and everything? You we guys do. like do stuff mm -hmm. together? We do. We have a song that we play before every game, and we make sure that that's our song. And then you, everybody has like their little groups they do something with, so some get into a prayer and some just have their high fives and just little things like that. But yeah, I got you. What song is it? Um, Sweet Caroline. <laughs> yes, that's really, it's our jam. <laughs> that's really funny. Um, so, when can people come watch your next game? Our next home game will be October 13th against USC, so it'll be a big game. And I'm assuming anybody fun. anybody with a sports pass can get in there, yeah? Um, they're actually free for anyone, so you really? don't even need a sports pass. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good mm -hmm. to know. Yeah. That's really good to know. Any social media you want to plug while you're here? Um... I would say everybody could go ahead and follow the WSU Cougars soccer team. Okay. And if they want to follow me personally, it's Leisha Nicole 09. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to take a quick break real quick. Alicia Overland, everybody. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Great practice for this. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming to my emergency meeting. I, I have a problem that's been slowing me down. I can't really get anywhere, and I just, I just need to get it off my chest. Scott, what is it? You said it's serious. You also said there'd be food, and I don't see any. Also, why are the lights off? Also, whose basement is this? That's not important. None of this is important. You I have an actual problem, and I need you guys' help. You don't have to be so dramatic, Scott. Guys, come on, let's just hear him out. I'm being followed. Okay, that's okay. It's just everywhere I go, I look around and there are these people walking and I turn around and they're all lurking behind me. Every week, Scott, you come up with this wild thing every week. Yeah, I don't think someone's actually following you. Just listen, listen to what I have to say for once in your lives. Fine, 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 Scott. I'll listen to you, but this is the last time. And if it is what I think it is, I'm gonna throw a chair. Okay, I just feel like there are people just randomly following me wherever I go. Oh my. <laughs> look, look, I know that there are some, there's some heated, heated emotions in our friend group based on past instances, but I'm, I'm telling the truth this time. I've had, I've had five incidents today of people just following me and I just... <laughs> Alright, I'm ordering a pizza. Anybody on any toppings? I see you. How about some pepperoni? Right. And pineapple. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no more, no more suggestions for me. Guys, I'm being serious. I am too. No pineapple. No, I mean about my condition. You don't have a condition. Uh, yes I do. It's... Uh, following syndrome. <laughs> Okay, Scott, how close were they following? Be real, how close were they? Um, uh, a uh, uh, football field? A football field! A distance! Of a football field! Exactly, Scott! Cut! I need to on the pizza for five minutes. But we haven't decided on toppings yet. Yeah, we didn't. Anything but pineapple. Why are we back on the pizza? Cause who is it just of a football field? You're being ridiculous. And I'm hungry. You're always hungry. Hey, did, did, did by a chance you order some wings? Do you have money to pay for the wings? No. Can we just go home already? Why are we still here? Because of Scott. We are always here because of Scott. Except we have a pizza on the way, so we're just staying for the pizza. Anyway. Fine, Scott. What happened this time? Fine. Okay, so... First, there was someone who was pretty close behind me. Well, that 
explains what happened to the food. Scott, 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 Scott. I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. That ain't it. Wait, are you guys being serious? Yes, yes Scott. Scott! Hey, uh, I got a large pepperoni pizza here. Oh, thank God, you're a lifesaver. Take the money. No worries, man. Hey, you look familiar. Have I seen you before? Have you been following me? No, I don't think so, but it feels like every time I've delivered a pizza, you've been there. Are you following me? Pizza for you. All right, welcome back, everybody. One last time, we're gonna finish off the night here uh, by continuing our sports theme. Our last guest is a WSU volleyball player. She's a killing machine, if you know what I mean, and she's actually in the over 1,000 career kills club. A 6'3 senior, number 10, please, would you welcome Taylor Min. Hey, thanks for coming on the show. Hi, great to have you here. All right, so great to have you here. We know you're super busy and everything, so thanks for, thanks for making time for us. I just want to start off. What does the uh, 1,000 Career Kills Club mean? Um, it means you get 1,000 kills <laughs> throughout uh, your career at WSU. Um, do you know what like a kill is? What is a kill? It's when... The big girls in the front spike it, yeah. and it touches the ground. Oh, so okay. I have a thousand of those. That's really yeah. impressive, and you, that's all throughout your entire four years here. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. That makes yeah. that makes sense now. So to get to know you a little bit, you're a senior, like we said. Yeah. What's your major? I am a sports management major. What made you want to get into that? Um, I don't know. Sports have been like my life, I guess. Of course. So um, I just wanted to get more into it, really. Yeah, I so, got you. So yeah, I just have a passion for sports. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. When did you start playing volleyball? Um, like. Eighth grade, freshman year, high school. Um, yeah, I only did it because all my friends were doing it. So, yeah, I, I got mean, you. Yeah, it's when, a friendly sport. When you first started it, can I? Uh, I asked our last guest, Alicia. You know her, yeah. the, uh, the soccer player. She, I, um, I asked her when when she first when you when you first start these sports, like when you're younger, you think mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this for my profession. Yeah. Did you think you were? Was that was that a dream of yours? I wanted to be. In the WNBA, basketball, basketball okay. is my thing. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, but then volleyball like came later. But mm -hmm. figured out I was better at that, so I'd stick with it. What was your first sport? Was it basketball? It was basketball. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. but did you still do that throughout high school? Oh yeah, I played basketball in high school, and yeah, go to the rec sometimes. A couple of friends. Yeah, I mm -hmm. got you. I understand that. So uh, time management, this is a pain. Yeah. Like I mean, <laughs> I, um. Yeah. How do you do it? How do you manage a um, sport, extracurriculars, curriculars? Like, how do you do it? I don't know how I do it. I'm still here. I'm alive. It's doable. Um, it's very hard. Uh, they try to tell you your freshman year, like, oh, you're going to have this. You'll have time to do this, time to do that. Mm -hmm. You really don't. Like, you don't have, like, a social life kind of thing. That's, yeah. like, the one thing that us athletes really miss out on. But um, we try our best, and, yeah, it's doable. And I guess it, bring, it really does bring you closer with yeah, people on the team. Yeah, it does. So besides time management, what are the other challenges of being a student athlete? Um, that's hard. Time management is like our that's, thing. That's a big one. Um, like I said, I think the social part, uh, just like, I don't know, like things that, like when you're on a team, you travel all the time, you're gone for like most of the weekends, just doing like college things really. Mm -hmm. um, we miss out on like the whole college part, the aspect of that, just doing like fun things. But um, we have time to do it here and there. But yeah, I got you. Oh, we just don't have time in that category. Yeah. So, uh, what's the pregame ritual like for a game? You got a game coming up mm. tonight, let's say. Yeah. What do you do? I, for sure, have to have a cup of coffee <laughs> before a game, all the time. That's fair. Yeah. Um, that's really it. Put my left shoes on before my right shoes. 
I don't have nothing special, really. Is there a ritual before, uh, like the team does before going on? Yeah, we do this like hand clapping thing um, before we go out and do like our hitting warm up. Mm -hmm. So we do this big clapping thing, and we have number twelve Claire Martin come in the middle, and she sings like this rah rah thing, and it gets us all hyped, and okay. then we go out there. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So let's talk about the games, because um, I know that a couple weeks ago, Illinois, you guys played Illinois here, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I went to that game, kill them. <laughs> and uh, my friends and I, we were just ruthless. To, like, we were heckling a lot. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that guy's yeah. We can hear you guys. <laughs> yeah. We were brutal. Like, mm -hmm. we didn't say anything awful, but yeah. I mean, we were just saying stupid mm -hmm. stuff. So, let's say, like, what's the WSU vol girl volleyball team? What do they think about that when it's going on to the other team? Uh, we love it. We love it how close like our bleachers are like to the court Like I think we're the only Pac-12 gym that has like a smaller environment where like you can actually hear the people like yeah. the crowd the fans So like we love it. We're just like yeah. Do the most it's just fun to hear and watch you guys now. How does it affect now when we were doing this? Yeah <laughs> we <laughs> We definitely saw like how it was messing with the other team. Yeah. If, now let's say that starts happening to you and you go out yeah. of town. Oh yeah. How yeah. is it? How is it like for you when you when people are yelling that type of stupid um, stuff? Um, like you try to like noise it out um, all the time, but I mean obviously you hear what they say. You <laughs> yeah. try not to mess up. Like that's when you're like, I cannot <laughs> miss this point. I can't mess up be just because they said that. Um, yeah. It for sure affects your play, but you try not to. Yeah. It's more of a mental thing. So when uh, when's the next game for you guys? Our next game is this Friday and Sunday. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, just takes the WSC Sports Pass to get into Bowler Gym. That's where they yeah. have these. That's mm -hmm. where they have these. Uh, when's, um, any away games coming up? Um, I think next weekend we go to Arizona, so we'll play the Arizona nice. schools. I think Friday and Sunday as well. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Any uh, anybody anybody want to shout out while you're on TV? Um, give a big shout out to Claire Martin, number twelve, a really big girl. She's my best friend. <laughs> She's <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So. Uh, Thank you so much for sitting down with me. I love meeting you. We all loved uh, we yeah, all loved having you tonight. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your night. And to all the viewers tonight here on Late on Cable 8, that is another one in the books. <laughs> Thank you again one last time, Taylor. Stay precious, Palouche. Have a great night.